where's I lost my presenter notes now. Hi, hello and welcome to our listening session for WiskWeb on redesigning your WiskWeb site. I am going to um, find my presenter notes here, which might require me to stop sharing for a second here. Now open that back up. All right, Zoom. Okay, should be able to see my screen again. And there we go. All right, so hello again. Uh, we're getting started here in this session. I'm just covering the basics and attempting to answer some common questions that we uh, receive regarding website redesigns. It should be noted that this presentation isn't really about migrating to Gutenberg, just setting that clarification now. We've been talking a lot about um, WordPress's new Gutenberg editor, also known as the block editor in our Lunch and Learns, um, if you've been attending. This is not about that. Um, uh, it's more so about like, if you're just thinking about moving a site um, or migrating a site, into like a new project so that you can completely like rebuild a redesign. Um, we will also not be talking a ton on content strategy today. I'll talk about it a little bit, uh, but we could always dive deeper in a, another session once we gather more insight from all of you on the kinds of content strategy questions you have. I'll also just note that some content strategy discussions are better suited for our office hours where we can dig in with you one-on-one -on -one based on your unique website needs. Um, I'll also preface this by saying that generally when we're talking about website redesigns, one size does not fit at all. There's not going to be a silver bullet to make this process easier or better. Um, there's going to be work required and we aren't able to make decisions on behalf of your team. So some of that is going to fall on you. Uh, we can only provide you with the info on how this could work and try to guide you in the right direction in terms of uh, web standards. So with that said, let's get started. Here is our agenda for today's session. Um, First, we'll take a look at some use cases and cover when a redesign makes the most sense. Next, we'll dive into the logistics, like what this process looks like. Then we'll chat really briefly about content strategy. This piece um, will differ site from, by site, from site to site, sorry, as I mentioned. So these are very general tips that we're gonna give you today. And finally, we'll wrap up with, with some answers to frequently asked questions. If you do have questions along the way too, please feel, the, feel free to post them in the chat. Uh, first, we're gonna look at use cases. We've identified three common use cases for redesigning an existing website in WiskWeb. The first is if you're rebuilding, if rebuilding in the existing site might jeopardize the existing content in some way. These are situations where um, breaking changes might be higher risk for your team. Um, the second case is you're making significant changes to your site. Um, if you're just fully overhauling everything, it totally makes sense that you'd want to start uh, in that work in a fresh, clean project. And uh, the third is you manage a very large or very high visibility site or both. Um, again, these seem to be situations where you wouldn't want to risk things breaking on your live site. The those cases lead us to um, the logistics here all on your shoulders. Before we get started, there are some things that we encourage you to do. Um, so I'm just noting that I got a little message that said that my internet connection was not great. Please let me know if you are unable to hear me. Um, I, I may have to turn off my camera at some point. Yeah, but, I was going to say, Jen, Jen yeah, I would cut Cut my camera? Okay, yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right, so uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to define your website goals. This is something that you should do anytime you're building a site, including a site redesign. Second, conduct an audit of your existing site. Take note of all of your existing pages, make a plan for what to keep, merge, or remove, and consider using Google Analytics to identify some of your patterns. Third, make sure to conduct user research. Again, you can use tools like Google Analytics and Google Search Console for this. 
you should also consider user interviews. Um, even three to five interviews uh, with users are super helpful. We do this all the time. Don't forget to get feedback from members of your organization as well. Fourth, review other websites that do things that are similar to what you do. This includes websites from other universities. Uh, you can take note of what you do and don't like, and that will help guide you in your content strategy. And fifth, make a navigation plan. So create a basic structure of the new navigation and make sure all of your important pages are accommodated. If you're not sure how to structure your navigation, consider something like a card sorting activity with a few of your users. So card sorting is kind of like a user experience approach where you um, you create a card for every page on your site and you ask users to lump them into categories and then give them category headings. And that will help you in understanding what makes sense to them the most. You could do that in person with just like index cards or you could. there are some digital tools if you Google it. Um, there are some tools online that you can use that are free. Um, all right, there are two options for rebuilding your WISC websites. First, you could start with a completely empty project. This option is a heavier lift overall, but it allows you to start fresh. You can completely change your navigation and content if you wish. Um, this is also a great opportunity for you to get rid of unnecessary content if you're feeling like things have built up for a while and you're not sure really what's in use. I'm going to pause. I see there's a question. Oh, thank you, Matt. Uh, Matt threw in the chat the link to um, the request a new site form. So if you were interested in getting started with a new project, you can fill that out. Uh, the second option is to start with an imported site. So this will be a little bit easier as you won't have to copy and paste as much content. However, there is still cleanup involved. Also, it should be noted that there is a chance that some content might not migrate over and will have to be manually recreated. In general, though, the imports um, like this don't work as well for very large sites. There's just so much content, uh, it kind of chugs through it. So there's you know, higher risk of not getting everything with a really large site, but they will cut down on how much work you need to do for sure. All right, next we'll cover the basic steps involved in a migration process. Um, first, you'll need to request a new project in WISCWeb. Matt threw that link in the chat there for you. Um, it looks like there's a question too about like, what is a large versus a small site in WISCWeb? That's a great question. Um, so I, I see a small site or like a, a basic WISC website is probably like 20 pages or less. A large site could be hundreds of pages, honestly. So, um, or it might be that there's tons of posts, like a, a large post archive of hundreds of posts. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, so yeah, the first thing you need to do is request a new project. Um, the site name that you list in the form there is going to differ, it need to differ slightly from your old site so that they can be differentiated. So if your old site was something like something.wiscweb.wisc.edu, you should consider something like something to.wiscweb.wisc.edu. Adding that little two to it uh, is a differentiator for us and for yourself, uh, which is very helpful. If you want your old site imported into this new space, please note that within your description field of the form. I'll be showing some of these fields in later slides, but just noting that is very helpful to have in the form description. Um, once you have your new project, it's time to either build or modify the content. If you are importing your site, there are a few things you're going to have to test. These include images and in-page links. Um, I'll show you how to do the how to test these in the next few slides. Finally, after you built and modified all of your content, you'll request a website launch just like you did for your initial site. Um, for redesigns, we still do require two weeks notice. The process is exactly the same. Um, so the next slide here is to show you where you can find this form. Obviously for you all who are in this session, um, 
Matt threw that in the chat for you, but if you go to our website, wiscweb.wist.edu, it is pretty prominent up at the top. It's a big blue button that says request a site. Uh, so that's where that is in case you weren't familiar. Within the form, we talked about kind of differentiating your site name a little bit. Um, this screenshot shows what field I'm talking about there and the example where you just add a little two to the end. So something two, um, if you were rebuilding something like the admission site, it would be admissions two, right? So that is that field. Um, here's an example of um, the place you should note with whether or not you want your site imported. So we have a little description field that asks you to provide a scope and kind of who's going to be um, involved in the site. And it this is a great place for you to just note, like, please import my site from, and then if you could actually include the URL of your existing site, that's great. Um, we can then go into your existing site and pull the what's called an XML file from it and import it for you. Um, when you do a site import, this is only really pertinent to the folks who are doing imports. This is not really relevant if you're starting with a brand new fresh project, but I do want to note one of the pieces of cleanup is that when you're importing, not all of your in-page links will um, update to the new location. Sometimes WordPress gets it wrong and still references your old site. Um, this is particularly true for media links. We encourage you after the import to check all of your in-page links by hovering over links within your page. This is just a screenshot of if I were to hover over the terms of service link in the form, in the bottom left corner of your browser window, you should see the full URL and that should reference your, your new project site. Um, which would be like something to .wiskweb. If it's referencing your new site, then you're great. If it's referencing your old site, that's when you need to make an update. Um, so that's a great way to test. And we can help you with that too if you have questions. I'm gonna pause here because I see that there's a question in the chat. If we do a rebuild and use site two as the name, can we still keep site at WISC? Yes. We are gonna cover the domain and questions like that a little bit later in our um, frequently asked questions piece, but you can absolutely use the same production domain with your new site. Um, all right, so the other thing that you need to test after an import is images. Uh, the way images work in WordPress's media library is very tied to the date in time or the I said, date that you uploaded the file. So once you start with a new site, your media will be referencing a different date. For that reason, you need to make sure that any images imported over are actually referencing your new site rather than your old site. Uh, the best way to do this after an import is just to right click on your images and choose copy image address or copy image link and paste that into a browser window so you can just you know, confirm that it's referencing the new location. If you don't do this step, once you launch your new site, your image links will be broken and you'll have to go back and do it after the fact. So we always recommend that you do it as you're rebuilding. And you will wanna check this for any images. All right, so now we're able to cover uh, that we were able to cover the basic steps for getting started. I want to touch a little bit on content strategy. As I mentioned earlier, this is not a super deep dive, but I will cover some of the general advice that we want to give our users. So first up is homepage tips. These are based on some common errors we see in web design on campus. The first is don't make your users guess what your site is about. Your users should understand what you do right from the homepage. Um, remember that your groups and organizations might not be as well known as like UW-Madison as a whole. So consider including info on who you are and what you do right on the homepage. It doesn't have to be a big paragraph. It could be a simple statement. That's just fine. Um, number two, make sure you are considering readability. Uh, while we do recommend making it clear who you are, that doesn't mean you need to write a book. Um, adding too much content, especially text, can be really overwhelming for the eye. So using plain language is a great way of limiting text and making sure things are more user-friendly. 
In that same vein, be a little choosy about what you include on your homepage. You don't need to recreate your entire website on the homepage. Only add the most important content. If you have to ask if your homepage or interior pages have too much content, they probably do. Uh, um, it's it's a lot for, if it's a lot for you to take in, consider a user who has a lot less context than you do. Um, number four here, make sure to do some research. Look at other homepage examples, including sites from other major universities. And number five, uh, you can safely ignore the above the fold concept. We've talked about this in our Lunch and Learns. Websites are now designed to flow depending on screen size. That means that the fold differs from device to device. So what you're seeing as you build is very different from what a user might see on like a mobile device or even just a you know, laptop of a different size than yours. Um, it's much more impo important now to focus on good user-friendly content. Users are definitely used to scrolling more now. That doesn't mean like shove everything in your homepage, but it just means like, it's okay if it all doesn't fit above the fold on what you see in your screen. I'm gonna pause there. Any questions about homepage stuff? All right, if you think of anything, feel free to put it in the chat. I'm gonna move on to navigation tips. Um, these are some light navigation tips that we have for you. Oh, looks like we might have a question here about homepage. Do you have a suggestion for images on the homepage? Is one large image best and are people are people the best? I would say that entirely depends on your group, what your goals are, what your vision are, what your vision is, what you want to convey to your users. So I can't give a very general answer on that. I think that's very specific to your group. Um, I would say, I see a lot of that where folks do do one large image and that's maybe because they see it elsewhere on campus. But this is a great opportunity for you to meet with a um, member of our team at office hours so that you can we can learn more about who you are, what you're looking to do, and then give you an, an answer based more specifically on your site, if that's helpful, Claire. We have another question from Josh. How do we insert images from our old page to our new one and avoid formatting issues? Yeah, so if you're importing, a lot of the, that those images do come over. You might have some that don't, and you'd have to recreate them. Um, I guess by formatting issues, I don't know if you're talking about like things aren't displaying properly. Uh, if you could offer a little bit more insight, Josh. Yeah, happy to. Sometimes the images don't display right. Sometimes it zooms in too much, and then sometimes ah. it just doesn't. Like I've copy and pasted like videos as well, and it didn't show up in the new one. I mean, mm. I figured out a okay. workaround, but I couldn't figure out why I couldn't just copy and paste it. Sorry. Yes, great question. So two things. One thing that everyone should be aware of is that WordPress is going to resize your images automatically um, to try to give the best experience for users. So you might see stuff where you're uploading an image and it's showing it a lot smaller than you anticipated. You do have the option to set that to show full size or a certain size. You can augment that right in the browser. That's a great thing also for office hours. If you're just not sure how to do that, we can absolutely show you. The other thing is that copying and pasting content from one site to another can carry over random code. So um, when you're when you're doing that, you might not see it on the front end, but on the back end, if you look at like the, the code view of the text block, there might be additional div tags or other tags that have been carried over that are influencing how your content is displayed. So in your case, Josh, there, that might actually be influencing how it's being shown and I think the best thing to note is like, rather than copying and pasting images, just uploading them to the media library and then placing them on the page is probably the best recommendation. Uh, Matt also included like a KB doc on image sizing recommendations in the theme, which will also help you with just, um, I think that's showing kind of like all the different page elements where we have a recommended um, 
size of image because another, I guess, yeah, you're probably what Matt's probably getting to there <laughs> is that um, certain page elements kind of require images to be a certain size for it to look right. So like, um, I think like featured content blocks are one of those things where it's like, if it's too small, it's just not going to look great. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, that, that would be my concern there as well as if you're a lot of the times it's trying to take an image that's just, it's not, it's not edited to the correct either high. Uh, well, mostly we worry about the width of the images. If the images aren't to the correct width of the page element, um, WordPress will try its best to do some auto formatting, which will mm -hmm. cause images to become um, blurry, distorted, things of that nature. So yes. that's, that's why I would always recommend if you're having issues with images, take a look at, well, what size are they? And then if you need to, you might have to, you might have to choose different ways to display those images because you're trying to fit a small image into a large um, element. Yes. And something that I just ran into this morning too, is like, you can place an image on the page and by placing on the page, WordPress is already going to be doing some resizing for you. Then the best way to get it to be the size that you want might be to make it full size first and then readjust to a custom size. I think because if you do, if you try to set a custom size right away, it could be distorting your image because WordPress has already attempted to resize it for you. So um, that behavior, that kind of process has helped me as well. Um, but yep, all good topics for office hours. Matt, could you grab the office hours link and throw that in just so folks have it? For those of you who aren't aware, we offer uh, office hours every week. It's Matt and myself. Um, we have different times that we offer office hours to try to make it a little flexible for you all. Um, you can schedule time with us uh, via the link that Matt is going to post there. And um, you, that's a great opportunity for you to get that kind of one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting help and also content strategy help. I think those are two great uses of office hours. Thank you, Matt. Um, all right, so going back to navigation tips, um, the first is to limit the number of menu items in your top nav, as well as how many items appear in your dropdowns. Um, users will get overwhelmed if there's too many options or if the options are too wordy. Make it easier on them by limiting the top level links and just uh, to just the most important content. So sometimes we see sites that have huge navigation lists and I do realize that there are limitations, especially for larger sites. So um, we definitely take that into account. And if you're having trouble with that, again, office hours is a great opportunity, but generally where you're able limiting that is helpful. Again, card sorting activities can help there. Um, my second item here, consider card sorting activity to help identify um, a user-friendly approach. So we talked about this earlier. There are tons of free resources online. You can, you can also keep it really simple, making cards um, for each content area on your site and having users lump them into categories and give them heading titles. Uh, let that be your guide to your navigation decisions if you're having trouble kind of deciding on that. Third, include in-page navigation options. So since we already know that you don't need to put every single page link in your top nav, it's important to note how you might include them um, differently. And that is through some in-page linking. We offer a number of different options for in-page navigation. So consider things like the group of links menu and or content layout jump links. Um, I am going to pause here because there's a question in the chat from Sarah. Can you provide references and research to share with team members who don't want to put everything in the top nav? I think this brings up a really great question that we see very commonly. And you might be thinking about this um, as you listen to this presentation. Like, it all sounds great until you have to convince others, right? And we very much understand that pain point. I think both Matt and I have had to build sites in the past for folks who um, 
who maybe needed to be convinced of a different approach. Um, yes, there is research out there for this. Honestly, a simple Google search and you're going to find um, articles on why you might want to do this. Um, for your particular group, again, you could always meet with us in office hours to talk about like your particular NAV and you could also cite us and say we heard from the WISC web team that this is too much content. If that helps too, I know sometimes just having someone else note it is helpful, which is really sad, I know, but it is the um, the situation we have. As a very research-based university, we do tend to be very wordy. We like to give a lot of content for people because that's sort of the natural way of research. Um, so there is sort of this like balance, right? Of like making sure people feel like they've, that we've covered what we need to cover for the research or for the content, um, but also making things user-friendly. I would say a great tool toolbox kit item, I guess, is to also maybe do some user research that you can cite. So you can actually ask your users and then provide that data to your, um, to the folks who might be uh, more critical of a narrowed down approach. I don't know, Matt, if you have any other thoughts there. Um, I was just typing in there, but honestly, I would echo, um, I guess, as strongly as I could think of recommend user research. Um, too often do we deal with sites being built or being rebuilt where the considerations of your audience isn't taken into account. It's um, it, the site is being built for the people rather than the people you're trying to reach. Um, and that's, that's the one issue yes. that a lot Good of our point. sites run into a lot is Decisions are being made not based on what the users need, but based on what the perception of what the users need is. Yes. Um, so information is king, always. Yep. And I think like if for those of you who do work with students, um, students are a great resource for some of these things. They can tell you, especially if you have student focused websites, which a lot of you do, they can tell you if they're feeling like it's overwhelming and, and really they should be asked about that information. They're the ones that are digesting it. So um, you want to make, you want to design for them if, if that's your audience. Um, our final note here on navigation tips, uh, finally, don't forget um, that you can use a combination of visuals and text to lead your users to content. So that includes things like buttons and icons that are hyperlinked. That's another option for navigation as well if you're struggling with fitting everything in. All right. Uh, helpful resources. So as you're getting started with a site redesign, just remember that there are tons of great resources available to you. Um, we already talked several times about WISC of Office Hours. We encourage you to set those up. Um, this is literally one-on-one -on -one time that you can spend with a member of the team, either Matt or myself. We can help answer your questions and provide light content strategy assistance. We're not going to do a real big deep dive, but if you just have a particular question about a page or a page element, we can certainly help guide you with our best advice. Um, which leads me to the Center for User Experience actually is a great group um, who, a great group of folks who focuses on accessibility and user experience design, and they offer uh, UX consultations um, for a small fee. So if you were looking for a deeper dive on like a full um, audit of your site, uh, that is something that you can consider. Um, they also do free accessibility evaluations, which is very nice. Um, the WISC Web Knowledge Base Hub has a list of all the websites that we host. So if you're looking to understand uh, what, what others have done or different ways that you might lay out your content, um, you can use this as a reference for how you might might approach different things. Um, for those of you who weren't aware, we get asked that a lot, like, how are others doing X, Y, Z? We have a whole list of sites that you can take a look at. It's behind a NetID wall, but you should be able to get into it. Um, and then for, um, we also have a doc that has photo resources. So it's links to various options that you can use for your campus website. Um, including the campus photo library, some icons that are available via university marketing, things like that. If you're interested in understanding what features exist, um, 
consider reviewing the UW theme website. That website includes pages for each page element in the theme, as well as a kitchen sink of elements page where it kind of shows off a bunch of them within one web page. And then don't forget the brand and visual identity website. University Marketing has put a bunch of great resources out there for web editors specifically. Um, noting here, um, yeah, Matt had posted in the chat, I'm also happy being the one saying to others that certain things are a bad idea, send them to me. Yes. So to reiterate, like if you're if you're finding that there's some pushback from within your groups about, you know, making some changes that are making your site more user friendly or accessible, we're happy to be the bad guys if you want to blame us too. Any question about resources, navigation tips, homepage stuff? We'll pause again here. All right, I will move on to our next section, which is frequently asked questions. Uh, these are things that we are commonly asked about this process, and we're hoping that this helps clarify things a little bit for you. So starting with the yes column, we have two columns here. On the left is yes, on the left is no. Um, sorry, sorry, on the left is yes, on the right is no. So in the yes column, yes, you can continue to use the same production domain when you launch. So if you're currently um, using admissions.wist.edu, you can continue publishing to admissions.wist.edu with your new site. Uh, it's a simple... Um, kind of mapping change that we make on the back end for you. That's all part of the launch process when you fill out your site launch. Um, yes, you can edit right up until launch, just like you did with the first round. We get that question when people launch websites. So I just want to make sure you know um, you can definitely keep editing right up until launch. Um, yes, you can choose only certain items to be exported from your existing site. It's a little nuanced, so we recommend office hours if you would like to discuss a plan for that. But generally, there are options for just moving certain items over. Um, so those are the yeses in the no list. Uh, something that we commonly get asked is about access to the old project once you launch the new one. You will not have access forever. In fact, we really like when we can archive um, the old site after about a month after your launch. This allows us to focus our resources on live active websites. We can be a little flexible on that, but generally that's kind of what we fo what we shoot for. Um, the good news is uh, what we do on the back end is we just archive it. So in that state, it can be unarchived at any time. So if we did archive and you realize that you had content that you needed to go look at, we can unarchive. That's a simple just request to our team. Uh, we're happy to do that for you. Um, and then we covered this already, but no, the import will not carry over everything. There's likely going to be some manual migration of content that you will have to do if you're doing an import version. All right, so that's what we've got for you today. That's really just covering the basics of um, a website redesign process. Like I said, we didn't dig too deeply into content strategies. So if you do have questions that you feel weren't answered, please feel free to post them in the chat. We still want to hear them because we might do a follow up listening session that goes a little bit deeper if we can answer those questions generally. Um, or if you have other questions about the process, please also post those in the chat. I am going to stop screen sharing for a moment. I'm going to attempt to turn my camera back on so that you can see me. Let me know if you have any issues with the connection there. We'll just kind of pause. This is time. If you have questions, you may ask. Uh, Liz in the chat is asking, are there best practices for transferring existing links? If you change your navigation, then your previous URLs that might be out there won't work, right? So yes, that's a great question. Um, in WISCWeb, you also have the option to use a tool called uh, Redirection. It's a plugin that can be activated in your new project. So if you are doing a lot of that changing of links, um, you can uh, preemptively set up redirects as you go. 
what I recommend for that is, you know, we kind of talked about setting up a navigation plan early on. What you could do is um, keep a spreadsheet of old, old URLs and new URLs. And then uh, you can set up redirects in the redirection plugin as you go, as you set up those new pages. Again, we can help you um, with some light training on that in office hours if you have questions about that process. But great question. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, and I'll just, just yes in on that. Um, one of the things that we have had sites do, and these are usually larger sites that have to do this type of thing, um, is they'll keep like a little spreadsheet of original link, new link, and then what you what we can work with you on um, is you can do that redirection in bulk using a, um, a CSV file versus just doing it one by one by one um, as you find them. Yes. So. You can do that as well. <laughs> that was a really good question, Liz. Other questions? What are folks wondering about? I guess kind of like also um, what have felt like blockers to you as you were thinking about redesigning? Those would be interesting things for us to hear about. All right, we have another note in the chat here from Sue. My department does not have a person who knows how to design websites well. I can update content and limited page design, but I have no expertise in actual design. Does do it provide the web developer service? And if so, is there a cost to it? That's a great question. I think that generally there's not really a service around uh, web design so much um, within do it. I think it kind of depends on your group though. So that might be something Sue to reach out to us about because depending on your group, you might have some uh, options available. Like if you're in the sort of research, teaching and research realm, but generally no, there's not a lot of great options for that. Uh, we have seen folks use like third party vendors for design, but what's challenging about that is they're less familiar with the UW theme and the limitations of the theme. Um, we've also seen folks who hire students, obviously they might not have the most web design background, but there are students studying uh, design that can, you know, have um, that can be a nice option for folks who just don't have a lot of funding and don't have someone de sort of dedicated to that full time. I'll, and, I'll speak. Yeah. I'll speak for myself here. Mm -hmm. Also, you're you're asking like about you know, like developers and things of that nature. And Jenna's throwing out some excellent ideas when you're looking for like development help, quote unquote development help. I I'll say this. I feel pretty strongly about my abilities to design and deliver web pages. I am by no means a web developer um, to the point where we make fun of the fact that I'm not a developer on the team. I'm a button pusher. Um, but you don't need to be a web developer. You don't need to be a web designer to, to, um, to build a good, solid website. You just have to know what you're, what you need and, um, have have some general information have some content and then meet with us um i don't i won't i'll call out beth in the chat because she's in the chat and i, I feel like she'd be okay with this but beth has literally set up ongoing meetings with me and others have done this in the past like the registrar site i had ongoing meetings with the registrar site to basically spend an hour with me to just walk through the process of rebuilding a website or building a brand new website. You don't have to have, be an expert, you, you don't. You just have to have an idea and we can work with you on trying to make that idea a reality. So don't get overwhelmed by it. Don't think you need to have a certain set of skills. You don't. Point, click, type, that's all you need. We can help you with the rest. Okay, I can do all those things, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that like, uh, we can't, help you build an entire website in office hours they're typically like 30 minute 
periods, but what we can do is like you can kind of queue up the most important next piece of information that you want to start on. Um, and then we can focus on that for the session. And then, like Matt said, you can set up a new session for other pieces. Yes, and uh, Beth noted in the chat that it's been very helpful to meet with Matt on a more regular basis, coming with a list and then working through it, which is a common thing that we see, like you have us for that period. So um, creating a list is great because then you can kind of prioritize the most important items and we can just walk through whatever we can get through during that time and then set up the next session for the remain remainder. <laughs> Sarah says, Matt, prepare to be inundated with meeting requests. I I am always ready for it because actually it's the thing that I enjoy doing the most. I love meeting with all of you and I love bouncing ideas off and I love giving people different perspectives for doing things within the UW theme. I know the UW yeah. theme can feel a little confined at times, but we certainly can find ways to create quality sites within the within that you know that perceived confinement of the brand i'll Absolutely. also say i'll also say just because you know i'll say it in lunch and learns but come mid-june through july my availability gets cut in half mm -hmm. so if you want to meet with me you got to get in early because yeah. my yeah. availability is summer hours during the summer yeah yeah um there was something I was going to note about content strategy too. Oh, a common thing that we'll see is like someone will find an example of something that they really like on another site. And they're like, I don't think I can do this in the theme. We that, That's something that we can very much help with. So if we can kind of see what you're looking to do, um, we can offer workarounds that are uh, available options in the standard UW theme. So um, those are actually really helpful for us because then it kind of gives us some guidance on what you're looking to do. Other questions? All right, well, I guess we will kind of uh, stop the recording there. I think questions have slowed.